Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 83 and 84. As you can see, problem number 83 is already on the blackboard. We are told that a car goes m miles in h hours. Not one hour, not m miles per hour, but m miles in h hours. The question simply is, what does it translate into feet per second? What does it translate its speed into feet per second? So let's find out, shall we? We, we have been given the information that three feet make up one yard, and a mile consists of 1,760 yards. Let's see what we can do. Let's, let's begin, let's start with what we know. We know that we can go m miles in h hours. We can go m miles in h hours. Now what we have to understand here is that we are looking for speed. We are looking for the speed feet per second. We need to have the unit of distance. It will be better to have unit of distance on this side because it will be easier to do, do the work on this side instead of doing it here. Unlike an equation, when you are solving an equation, we prefer to have our unknown on the left hand side. When you are doing the word problem, it is better to have the unknown quantity on the right hand side because that way you, can, you have the room to you have more room to do the work. It's just a matter of convenience, that's all it is. So for the sake of convenience I'm going to transpose this thing. For the sake of convenience we're going to transpose this thing. M miles in H hour is same as saying that implies we are taking that implies that we take H hours or M miles. It's the same exact thing. M miles. We don't want hours, we want feet, we don't want miles, we want we don't want hours, we want seconds, and we don't want feet, uh, we don't want miles, we want feet. So we need to convert these hours into seconds and miles into feet. Let's do that first. We know one hour consists of 3600 seconds. If one hour is made up of 3600 seconds, two hours will be twice as much, and three hours will have three times as many seconds, and therefore h hours will have, this implies that h hours will have 3600 times h seconds that's how long we take for m miles let's convert this miles in, uh, this m miles into feet we know that one mile is made up of 1760 yard and we know that one yard is made up of three feet there are three feet in one yard that rep this quantity represents one mile we're not we're not taking this much time for one mile, we're taking this much time for m miles. So we finally need to multiply this thing by m, by m, don't forget that. And now we can take care of our units. As you can clearly see, we have a yard on the top, we have a yard on the bottom. The yards are going to cancel out and we're going to end up with feet. 17, 1760 times 3 times m, don't forget the m at the end. That's how many feet we have, right here. This, that's how many feet we have. Yards, we, the yards cancel out. And we end up with the unit that we need, which are feet. So we end up with 1760 right here, times 3, don't forget, times m over 3000, 3600 times h. This is our feet and this is our seconds. So if, if we are taking this much time, if we are taking 3600 seconds, 3600 times h seconds to go this many feet, then in one second we should be able to go this many feet divided by this many seconds, 1760 times 3 times m over 3600 times h feet per second. Let's simplify, shall we? This is where we have to take our time. Otherwise, we're going to end up making mistakes. Otherwise, we're going to end up making mistakes. The first thing I would, like to, I would like to do to keep our life simple is to write this 3600. You see this 3600 here? Let's write this 3600 as, as 36 times 100. It will make our life easier. Let's get going, shall we? Anything, anything you like. The sequence of step does not matter as long as your work is correct. I see 3 on the top, I see 36 on the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 3. 3 goes away, and 36 will become 12. I see 100 on the bottom, I see 0 on the top, let's divide top and bottom by 10. This 0 goes away. This is, this is 12 and this is, uh, this is uh, 176. 
76, 76 we know is divisible by 4 because 76 is just 4 less than 80. And since 80 is divisible by 4, 76 being 4 less than 80 should be divisible by 4. And we know that as long as, as long as the last two digits of the number, listen very carefully, we know that as long as the last two digits of the number are divisible by 4, the entire number is divisible by 4. This is something we learned in the basic math series, day 1 through 100. You don't have to watch all the way up to 200. The first 100 videos, we learned quite a lot of stuff there. And what we learned there was, was divisibility rules. And divisibility rules tells us, or one of the rules of divisibility tells us that as long as the last two digits of a number is divisible by 4, the number itself is divisible by 4. Just divide top and by, bottom by 4. Now, if you did not happen to see that, it's not the end of the world. You're just going to end up doing one extra step. You're going to end up dividing top and bottom by 2 and then divide top and bottom by 2 again. It's not a big deal. I'm going to divide by 4. 12 has 3 4s. How many 4s does 1 have? How many 4s does 1 have? 1 has no 4. That 1 goes and joins the 7 and becomes 17. How many 4 does 17 have? 17 has 4 4s. 17 has 4 4s. The remaining 1 goes and joins the 6 and becomes 16 again. And 16 has 4 4s one more time. Anything else can we do? We can divide 44 by 3. Oh, we do have a 10 here, we do have a 44 here. 10 is an even number, let's divide top and bottom by 2. So we end up with 10 becomes 5 and 44 is going to become 22. So what do we end up for our final answer? This is where we have to pay attention because we don't want to miss anything at all. And don't forget the variables. The variables are right here. M times H, M over H rather. So we have 22 M, 22 M over 3 times 5 which is 15 h this is how many feet we are going per second that's our answer 22 m over 15 h feet per second the question is how do we know if this answer is any good how do we know if this answer is correct well, by verifying it as we have always done we verify our answers we always verify our algebraic answers by converting the algebraic problem into an arithmetic problem by plugging in numbers, doing it arithmetically, and see, the, see if the answers we get arithmetically is the same answer that is given by this answer when we replace the variables by the values that we plugged in. Let's do it, shall we? Enough of the talk. How fast do you want to go? How fast do you want to go? A car, this is a very nice car, it can go maybe six miles every two hours. Six miles every two hours. We need the room, so we're going to do the work on the top. Okay, remember, six miles every two hours. And don't forget, we plugged in six for M. I'm going to make a note here someplace that we plugged in six for M and two for H. Only because that information is going to go away. And we're going to go six miles every two hours, which is three miles every hour. Three miles every hour. Three miles in one hour. One hour. Which is same as saying, again, you see we need to bring this hour on this side and miles on that side because we want the distance on this side. Which is same as saying that we are taking 3,600 seconds, which is one hour, for three, three miles, for three miles. We need to convert these miles into feet. We multiply this number of miles by three times 1,760 and it becomes feet. That implies that in one second, in one second, we should be able to go three times three times 1,760 over 3,600, which we can write that as 36 over 100. This is beginning to look pretty ugly. Let's hope and pray to God that it, did, it does actually give us the answer at the end that agrees with this answer. We have to pay attention, that's what it is. I see three times, I see three, I see 36, let's divide top and bottom by three, we get 12. I see three here, I see 12 here, let's divide top and bottom by three. One more time, it becomes four. I see 176 and I see zero at the end, zero at the end, let's divide top and bottom by 10. Let's divide top and bottom by four, because we know 176 is divisible by four, we just did that here. So 17 has four fours, 17 has four fours. The remaining one goes and joins the 16, becomes 40. The six, the remaining one goes, becomes 16. And 16 has four fours again. And since we divide it top by four, we need to divide bottom by four. Let's divide top and bottom by 
2, we get 22, and 10 becomes 5. So we end up with 22 over 5 feet per second when, when we are going 3 miles per hour, which is same as plugging in 6 for M and 2 for H. 6 for M and 2 for S. 6 miles every 2 hours is same as 3 miles every 1 hour. Let's plug in the value here and see if we get 22 over 5. If we get 22 over 5 out of that one, we are in business. It's a good sign because we do have 22 right there. So where can we do the work? Let's do it right here. Right here. 22 over 15 times M over H. M is 6. H is 2. And remember, we need 22 over 5. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. If we divide, let's divide top and bottom by 2, 6 becomes 3. Let's divide top and bottom by 3, and 3 goes away, and 15 is going to become 5. We end up with 22 over 5, just like it was supposed to when you plugged in values of m and 2, the values of 6 and 2 for m and h, which means our answer is indeed correct. Our answer is indeed correct. Let's do one more. Number 84. Number 84. How long will How long will W workers take to assemble P parts if one can assemble N parts per hour. Let's see what we can do. How long will W worker take if they were assigned a job to put together P parts if the speed of one worker is N parts per hour. Let's see what we can do. We need the room obviously. We need a lot of room. So again, let's begin with what we know. We know that one worker can assemble. We know one can make one can make n parts n parts in one hour well if you can make n parts in one hour that implies that one worker should be able to make one part in one over n hours in other words in other words if we were told in other words if we were told that one can make two parts in one hour then one part will take half an hour if we were told that one part, one, if one worker can make three parts in one hour, then one part will take a third of an hour. If one worker can make ten parts in one hour, then one hour, one part should take six minutes, one tenth of an hour. Since he's making n parts, one part will take one or nth, one one nth of an hour, one nth of an hour. We don't want to make, we don't want to make one part. We want to make p parts. So if one part is taking this many hours. Two parts should take twice as long, three parts should take three times as long, seven parts should take seven times as long, and we want to make P parts. So that implies that one worker can make P parts in P over N hour. But if one worker can take, do it in this many hours, if you put what if you were to put two workers, they will take half the amount of time. In other words, two workers will take whatever this quantity is divided by two, half of that amount. If you put three workers, they can do the job in a third of the time. If you put ten workers, they can do it in a tenth of a time. We have W workers. This, this implies that W workers should be able to make P parts in P over W times N hours. That's all. We are done. Essentially what we did was Whatever this quantity was, whatever this quantity was, P over N, we have to divide that by W. 
which is same as P over N times 1 over W, which translates to P over NW. P over NW hours. How do we know if this answer is any good? How do we know if this answer is any good? So let's plug in numbers. Let's plug in numbers. How many workers do you want? Let's have four workers. Let's pretend that four workers can can make uh, four. How long will it take for four workers to assemble? Let's pretend that you have to make 20 parts. 20 parts. If one guy can make, put in something here, two parts per hour. Okay, listen carefully. Okay, let's, let's see what happens. So here we go. So if you're going to pretend that one guy makes two parts every hour, okay, listen very carefully. If we, if, we, if we assume that one guy makes two parts per hour, and if you can assume that we have four people, then four people should be able to make eight parts every hour. Eight parts every hour. How long will it take them to make 20 parts? Oh, I don't like that. 20 is not nicely divisible by eight, is it? Because if you can assume that we have two workers, uh, if you can assume that each worker can make two parts every hour, then four workers should be able to make eight parts. Let's change that into 80. So if they're making eight parts every hour, 80 parts should take 10 hours. The answer is 10 hours. The answer is 10. If this thing gives us 10, when we plug in these respective values for the variables, if this gives us 10, then the answer is correct. How much is P? P is 80. P is 80. How much is N? N is 2. And how much is W? W is 4. What do you know? You see? 80 divided by 8 is 10. It checks out. That answer is correct. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I know.